Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my desktop. We're here for the sole reason to install the Westeros Alpha version 0.53 enhanced submod. A very decent little submod that pretty much just enhances the alpha. Adds tons of new stuff to it. So, without me drooling on, we'll just quickly get right into this. You want to open your browser. You want to go to this link right here. Once again, with every single one of my installation videos, every link that you need will be right underneath the video easily accessible so you can just click on that and you're there straight away what you want to do is it will be in the second section here you want to scroll down until you find the thread that is called release sub mod enhanced version 0.53 new version 0.1.04-2012 you want to click on that and this will take you to here you'll then have this page right here for this and now the file you want is the first link here. You'll want to click on this. Now you wait for this to load. Once again with the famous giant download now button. Nice and easy for you guys to find. And you want to wait four seconds. And it should start downloading. Right guys, while that's downloading, with every single one of my installation guides, I do recommend downloading this, which is 7-zip. Uh, once again, Link will be underneath the, in, underneath the video in the description, so you can easily get to it. There are two download options for either 32-bit or 64-bit. If you don't know what your computer is running, you simply go to Start, My Computer, and you want to right-click, go to Properties, and long story short, you'll come up with a window like this. It will either, underneath Systems and Systems Type, it will either say 64-bit if you're running 64, 32 if you're running 32, and that's the same story for Windows 7 and Vista. The only way it changes if you're running Windows XP, it will either say 64 if you're running 64, or it won't say 64, which means you're running 32. Very, very simple to get around. So download whatever one that is. 7-zip is not required to download the mod, but I do highly recommend it. It is very useful. So, with that done and the file downloaded, you can minimize it. Uh, open up your Windows taskbar, and then you want to go to your documents, which will be around here, right next to my music, pictures, videos, etc, etc, my documents, in that general area, did a downloads file. In here, you want to right click on this, if you want to go to 7-zip, which you'll notice there may be an extract all, but for this purposes, if assuming you've downloaded 7-zip, you want to hover over it, go to extract here. Now you want to wait for this to be done. It could take a while, it is quite a big file. Not too big, obviously, but it's big enough that I have to sit here stringing out my words. <laughs> so, guys, you just wait for this. Uh, I should take this time to recommend you double check that your medieval is in fact patched to version 0 0.5, because if it isn't, then it is not going to work. If you've got the, I believe it's. Medieval Gold Edition, which came with the Kingdoms expansions already in the disc and all that, then you're already patched to version uh, 1.3, I believe. So you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is patch to version 1.5. And if you've got Steam, then you're already updated fully. Okay, you want to keep this file open here. And you want to go back to here. This time you want to go to your computer. Your local disc. Yep, lag your program files and you want to scroll down to find the Sega file now the only difference here for Steam users is instead of going to Sega you go to Steam Steam Apps Common and right about here you'll have Medieval 2 file I obviously don't have it because I don't have it installed on my computer via Steam at the moment uh, you want to click on that and then go to mods and then you want to move the Westeros file into the mods folder but for the purposes of this installation I will show you we will want Sega, not Steam. You want to go to Sega, and then you want to click on the Medieval file that you want. You'll notice that I have two. That is because I do make copies of the game, just in case, if, whenever you're playing around with the files, if you accidentally change something and the game no longer works, instead of uninstalling everything and have to reinstall it all over again, the worst case scenario is you uninstall and you delete and remove the game mod from your files, and then you've got a blank slate to start again from. It's a lot faster and it is really handy if you do play around with the mod files quite a bit like I do. Okay, 
Now you either want to go to your copy or your medieval, whatever one you want to change into the Westeros mod. You want to double click on it. And then you want to go into the mods file. And now you should have this with Americas, British Isles, Crusade and Teutonic. I'm going to move this to the side a second so you can see where the Westeros file is. You want to click on the Westeros file which will be the extracted version. You'll then want to drag it over onto the mods file and move it into here. Just follow the on-stream instructions. Yes, skip, go ahead, just click yes, 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 yes. That will move this over here. You can now close this because you no longer be needing it. Now you want to go into Westeros. I would recommend naming it so that you know what mod you've installed. Trust me, if you name them all Westeros, it can get a bit bloody confusing what mods watch. Like you notice I've named this one Rivers and Hills, Black Fray and all that. It's just a good idea to rename them. So, the file you want is the file that will be called Westeros. It will be a Windows batch file, about 50 bit bytes, uh, 1 kegabyte if you're looking. And it will have a little picture of a cog, generally, from whatever, what the general Windows batch file icon is. You want to double click on this, and me personally, I like to create a shortcut to the desktop. Just so that you know where your mod is. Okay guys, that's it. It is in fact installed on your computer. It's pretty much exactly as easy as that. All of these mods are relatively the same kind of story to install. They're relatively easy. And once you've done them once, you really do them blindfolded. So you can close this now. You no longer need it open unless you're going to go change things in there like I do. And that's when you... And then all you need to do is double click on the batch file. And the game will load. And that's it guys. I can't show you any more. The mod is installed on your computer. I hope this helped out guys. There's been quite a few of my subscribers and viewers that have been recommending the enhanced installation guide. Do it now Sol. Do it now. <laughs> I will eventually cover every single one of the sub mods and mods that I do for videos. Don't worry about it. Now that I've got Windows 7 finally. I'm getting with the times. Kinda. Just about when Windows 8 is coming out, but oh well, you get the point. I will eventually cover installation guides for everything. If you look around your screen now, there should be annotations scattered around the place, uh, leading you to different installation videos that I've done for different sub-mods, so that you can check them out and check out that mod if you like. Uh, that's it. It's on your computer, so I hope you enjoyed this. That's all for now. Soul out.